Okay. We're recording. We are recording. I can see that I am recording. I'm see. recording. This is my voice. <laughs> this, is, I, this, is the, this is the words I'm saying. I'm saying words. <laughs> <laughs> this is the words I'm saying. Good start. <laughs> Welcome to Way Too Broad, a safe place for friends to talk about things that make them sound crazy. I don't have more of an intro than that written this week, so <laughs> let's check in with my my hosts. My name's Hannah, um, and my ho- co-hosts are Aaron and Ben. Um, Aaron, how how are you? I'm doing great, Hannah. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm just loopy. I've had like a lot of sugar and also extra caffeine today. So I'm like, and a little miniature seltzer water. Yeah, and a lot to top of, it all off. A lot of miniature seltzer waters with cartoons on them. So um, that's good. Ben, how was your weekend? My weekend was awesome. I, I, <laughs> I knew you were referencing something, and I literally forgot what we did for a second. Oh no! But no, I, remember. I was going to ask remember. about it this came back. if you didn't bring it up. <laughs> It's my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I couldn't remember if that was that like last weekend or the weekend before. It felt yeah, like and it was Friday was your birthday reason. too. Happy birthday, yeah, baby Ben! Thank you. Happy birthday, Ben! Aaron, I I texted Ben on Friday, uh, which was his birthday, and I asked him I asked him to verify for me that he was twenty two, and he texted back, "Well, I don't know about you," as one text, and then his next text was, <laughs> "But I'm feeling twenty two." <laughs> Well played, sir. Thank you, I only, thank you. My only regret in life is that song didn't exist when I turned to <laughs> Yeah, I went back and did the math, because I, I, I felt like I identified it with it at the time, but I was 23. We were 23, Oh, right? you just missed it. Yeah, yeah. When That's that really... song came out, how old is Tay-Tay? She's like 29, I think. Oh, yeah. same Z's. <laughs> Maybe she'll write, and her, her birthday's after mine, I think, not that. I have tabs on that because I do, <laughs> because I definitely do. But I wonder if she'll write like a, you know, a preemptive birthday song for us, like age wise. You know, I don't a song about no, turning thirty. If you think feeling, she's gonna write another one? I, I'm feeling super flirty, <laughs> um, celebrating the big Being thirty. 30. So I, don't I know. can't wait for Taylor's song, "Feeling 30. <laughs> <laughs> to come out a year after I did but, but but speaking of birthdays you, y- y'all got into something interesting yeah oh yeah we should actually talk about what we did huh yeah because it's it's relevant to the very we'll, first episode of this we'll podcast be, and we'll be referencing the mb words is that okay <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, I just was trying to lead Ben into talking about it, so I didn't yeah, continue I, I being will, the I only will. person. Yeah, I'll talk about it. Um, we went to a live show of My Brother, My Brother, and Me. The, 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 the MB key. word is the McElroy brothers, yeah. just yeah. in case. Also, my brother. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the MB. A B A B M word. <laughs> very wrong. That was very wrong. Aaron. <laughs> I lost count in my head of how many B's I said. It's actually it's really cool because I got into listening to the McElroy Brothers and Mabim Bam because of the first episode of this podcast, and then by the time we got to my birth around my birthday when they happened to be, uh, their tour was coming near near us. Um, Hannah was like. I had been listening to Mabim Bam all summer because of this podcast, and Hannah was like, hey, you want to go to this live show? And I was like, I actually feel like that's worth it now because I know this podcast and love it because it's hilarious. Yay. This podcast is touching lives. Yeah, yeah for ours. Real. Our lives. <laughs> just, just, just ours. Just, it's like Ben's life. <laughs> yeah, it's my it's one. It's touch one life. <laughs> <laughs> that's enough. That's enough. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, yeah, it was super fun. Um, it was Ben's birthday present was I got him, I, I got all four of us tickets to Mabim Bam. And then um, I also got us t-shirts, uh, Shrimp Heaven Now t-shirts, um, mm-hmm. which um, if anybody doesn't get that, they can Google it because it's difficult to explain. But, um, <laughs> but you had Inside Joke t-shirts on. Yeah, from the well, show. Well, there's the Bim Bam Inside yeah, Jokes, which right. happens a lot with podcasts, which yeah. is kind of a funny phenomenon. Inside yeah. jokes that hundreds of thousands of people know. Yeah, yeah. It's cr- it's so interesting. Um, but what I was not expecting, <laughs> and not really down with, 
was wearing those shirts in public near where the show venue was going to be, we got yelled at a bunch of times. Like, Ian and I were both wearing them, and, like, in the parking garage, like, the first thing that happened was someone yelled, Shrimp Heaven Now! at us. And I just didn't know what to do with that kind of attention. (laughs) And it it happened, it also, we went to dinner before at a restaurant, like, right across the street from the theater, and there was people, like, it was, like, five o'clock, so there weren't many people there, and one of the only other tables there was two other people wearing Shrimp Heaven Now, like, the exact same shirts. Oh my god. And she, the, the woman at the table was... She just, like, shouted it at us in the middle of the restaurant. I didn't know what it, to do. Yeah, it's very... That's that's why we decided not to wear ours. I know. I totally... We totally, like, saved you guys by <laughs> being the, the test yeah. subjects was, for that. Y'all should have prepared some sort of, like, retort well, to, the, you know? The well, thing- the thing is, with it, yeah, within the inside joke, there is... Because, uh, like, the full quote is Shrimp Heaven Now is something a kid said, so, and then... Yeah. His mother said, we can't keep doing this, Daniel. It was, please, Daniel, we can't keep doing this. Yeah, please, Daniel, we can't keep doing this. <laughs> it was important to get that quote right. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so, like, I guess that's a, that's a uh, an appropriate response, but it also, I feel like, encourages that behavior more, which I don't want to do. Right. It, like, reinforces it. Like, even walking down, we got to the theater, like, right before doors opened, so we were, like, walking beside the whole line of people to get to the end of it. Yeah. And just the whole, it felt like we were like fucking an exhibit at a zoo because like people, everyone listen, just kept shouting it. I didn't understand that though. seriously because w- there were people there dressed like wizards and stuff from like yeah. the, from their other podcast and and I was like why are we getting stared at for wearing like a t shirt you can buy online? I mean it was all very positive attention but like I'm just not I'm not accustomed into to positive it. attention. I don't I'm like any attention. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> but we got we took a picture with um, two thirds of the McElroy brothers as well. I saw that on Facebook. Yeah, because mm-hmm. we weren't um, they they weren't able to do like they usually do meet and greets afterwards, but they weren't able to do it. So because they um, are just sweethearts, they decided that instead that they would um, take the time to go like shake hands with and talk to like their entire line waiting to get in outside. At wow. all, they were doing two shows that night. Yeah. Also, which is like crazy, because ours was wow. at started at eight, I think, or seven, seven, and then their second seven, and then their second show is at nine thirty. Mm-hmm. She's like, well, what was the show like? Was it like a live recording of one of their podcasts, or did they have like prepared content? It was like a live recording of one of the podcasts, but then for like the latter forty half hour, forty five minutes, they took audience questions, which was really oh, cool. fun. And they cool. were really good at like handling people's like either awkward questions or just like. Because, you know, b- b- with their podcast, they handpick the stuff that'll be funny mm-hmm. of, all, like, all the questions they get, but, like, and so they can't really do it with audience questions, but they did a good job of making questions that, like, weren't funny, funny, and, like, getting getting all the funny that they could out of random people. I was really impressed by that, actually. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it was that cool. Fun. Um, I, I think there's also uh, a, a couple of corrections we need to make from from our last episode. I have one that I hadn't mentioned to you, Aaron, that I'll start with because it's quick. I, I said that Carly Rae Jepsen's album was new, the album Emotion. <laughs> it, it's actually been out since 2015. <laughs> so, but there was a B-side, um, like, a, like an extension album released in 2016. So neither of them are new. I, I just <laughs> only found out about them now. That's they were new to me. Yeah. They were new to me. Me as well. Still new to me. Haven't listened to them. Yeah, also so. the same. <laughs> They'll probably always be new to me. So. You know, they're actually s- stuck in my head constantly now, and I don't, I can't talk about it. <laughs> um, um, yeah. And- so was the other correction? The other correction for me, quickly was was that my wife is a dedicated listener of the podcast. Yeah, shout out to and Molly. Sh- shout out to Molly and. Uh, she pointed out that um, during the the name queer segment, I neglected to tell uh, my my own name queer um, experiences, <laughs> which she was disappointed to find that I neglected to do that. So my my name queer thing is different from Ben's. Um, it's that I can't pronounce names that are like extremely common, like what? Um, like. Um, a good example is that my good friend had a baby named Catherine. <laughs> I she texted me the name, you know, when the baby was born. 
because uh, nothing is worth a phone call these days. <laughs> and I was reading it to my wife, and I was like, oh, you know, Kristen's new baby was born, and her name is Katherine. <laughs> it's like, it's like, and uh, another one is like, uh, another friend had a baby, also texted me, um, and I was like, wow. Madeline? Madeline, Ma- it's Madeline. But I was like, really Madeline, like, like e, these, these, like, uh, and we have a friend Chelsea, and I, I'm like, is it Chelsea or Chelsea? Which apparently is not. <laughs> but like for me, like, did I you feel ask like her that, or just like to yourself when you? No, the I name. would, I I'll, like, you know, m- r- reference her to to my wife and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah Chelsea. Okay. And Molly's like, Chelsea is not a name. Not a name. I'm like, <laughs> I'm certain it is. <laughs> We actually just thought of a name thing. I, 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 I my, my thing's gonna be really short, so I feel fine that we're taking some upfront time. But this mine's is pretty great. short too. Okay, mine's pretty short. Three. All right. <laughs> All right. Um. So, so this is what happens when we record weekly. I guess. <laughs> but, <laughs> Our obsession is how we don't know names. <laughs> no. Um. But but, uh, Ian and I got into like, uh, as as close. To, to an argument as we ever get into about the name tyranny <laughs> because okay. I because there was a, a show we were watching a reality show and there was a girl named tyranny on it and like literally spelled like what? you know when an evil guy takes over your country like tyranny and and I was like that's not a name this name is ridiculous look at this this girl's name is tyranny this is crazy Ian isn't this crazy and he was like I mean, no. Like, I've met people named Tyranny before. And I was like, did you meet fuck you, no, you have it. Like, what? Did you meet pilgrims named Tyranny? No, no. No, he said, like, I, I don't know, there was a girl in my class in college named Tyranny. And I was like, oh, yeah, what was her last name? And he was like, I don't know. And then... <laughs> and Show then, me um, proof that she exists, please. <laughs> Do you have a copy of her birth certificate <laughs> that you can produce at this time? But then, that are given name. Well, yeah, but then um, it turned out he was talking about the name Tierney, like the Irish name, like T I E R N E Y. Oh, that's not the E-Y. same. Also, that's a last name. It can be a first name, I guess. Really? But I mean, I've 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 heard of it as a first name. <laughs> but we, we still don't agree on whether those are the same or not. Like if they're if they're pronounced the same. But I, absolutely I, not. <laughs> I agree. Not even at all. Aaron, Aaron, what do you think? I'm not a good person to ask about this because I'm not certain. <laughs> she it's just pronounced said that she way. pronounced Catherine <laughs> Catherine. <laughs> I feel like that's a valid pronunciation of the name. I, I, I mean, am not honestly, that's to name that's any more children. valuable. That, that's more um, valid than valid. turning tyranny into two syllables. Because it is a three-syllable word. Yeah, exactly. Tyranny. Like it's it's several letters different, and it's t- and it's and it's one two syllables versus three syllables, and yeah. one of them is a traditional like Irish name, and the other one is just some word that somebody decided to make their child's name. Like, so he's not even arguing that they're homophones. He's like he's arguing that they're the same word. He's arguing that because tyranny is a, is kind of a common tyranny. name, that the name tyranny is not weird. That's ridiculous. I object. Yeah, that's th- ridiculous. To that, I say, maybe if it were like a pleasant concept, you know, yeah, yeah. like you know, but not tyranny. You, like, if nobody, you name I feel your like child would. tyranny, then you don't know what that word means. Exactly. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. It'd be Agreed. like naming your kid chlamydia because it's a pretty word. Right. <laughs> Can I, Who? at the oh, risk sorry. of pushing the name queer topic too far, can I, can I, <laughs> can I bring up a related thing I did the other day? Yeah. I had, so I was talking to my mom about Zelda, because we've both been playing a lot of Zelda, and I did this thing where <laughs> twice I made a typo where I didn't, like, mistype the word, like, get a letter off. I typed a word that rhymed with the word I meant to type, but it was entirely <laughs> different. Like Melda? I did it twice. So for once... One, I said, oh my god, you can ride pears, when I meant to say bears. <laughs> and I didn't, but I didn't type pears like the fruit. I typed P-A-I-R-S. What? Like, an entirely different word. <laughs> and I have no fucking idea why. And then, then later on... you need to go to the brain doctor. <laughs> later on, I meant to say catching horses is really fun. But I said catching forces is really fun. <laughs> with a C? <laughs> yeah, with a C. Like, just the, the, the other word. I don't know why. <laughs> 
I think your brain tired. I, yeah, I must be. Your brain From broke. College. Just, just so when shit. I'm when I'm really tired, I uh, I can't do it on purpose. Like it's so frustrating. But I'll um, you know, when you switch like the the first two, you say two words and you switch the first two yes. letters of each. Yes. Yes. I'll yes. do that in elaborate ways, like just like <laughs> elaborate, <laughs> elaborate ways that like you could not, I could not do on purpose. And it makes me, sometimes I'm like, I do it a lot and I, I get really nervous that <laughs> something is wrong <laughs> in my brain, but just like really intricately. Like you had a well, small stroke. Like, yeah, happened. like do a whole sentence where like each word is like <laughs> different. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> who's going? Who's telling their obsession first? Well, Ben I'm, is. I think I'm first on the outline. I ben, is, oh, I didn't but, look at the outline. But there is a new segment that I would like to premiere this week as well. You, you can tell I now? didn't read the outline. <laughs> <I'm so sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> Am I fired from the podcast? <laughs> yes. No. Um, no. In fact, I, I I have some documents in there that I hope you guys didn't read because I think they'll be more fun if they're a surprise. Um, All right. Well, okay. <laughs> one of them be. is this new segment that I'm calling terminology in which is a terrible and unfair name because not only is it a bad pun but it's unfair to ian because he did not originate all of these terms but um i have like a running list of things that we say instead of like the actual word for something in our household um and uh i'm gonna read you like one a week or one whenever we feel like it so fun okay. that goes right. okay so the one that, um, my favorite one today <laughs> that he just came up with today is, um, for cat litter. He, he was <laughs> trying to tell me that we needed cat litter. Um, and what he said was, can you get some cat food and some shitting sand for the poo desert? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fuck, that's funny. Yeah, that's really good. So, let well me just cross sir. that one off, and Ben... <laughs> <laughs> Be all ready for next week. <laughs> yep. And, uh, Ben, take it away. Okay. Um, so my obsession this week is, uh, an author that I've been reading a lot of oh. books by lately. And he's kind of like an author that got me back into doing a lot of reading, because kind of since college started, uh, I haven't been reading as much as I used to and, and maybe just because I've been like busier with schoolwork and stuff or just from I don't know I don't really know why but I, I kind of stopped and this is the first author in a while where like I read one book by him and I was like I need to get like every other book and read them all because I was so good um and it, we discovered him my girlfriend and I when she went to a bookstore and just she loves bookstores she can send like three hours in them just wandering around and she found somehow this author, I think it was like a staff recommendation. Um, his name's Haruki Murakami. He's Japanese. Um, is he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Sorry. the book we first read by him was, is called Kafka on the Shore. I'm reading that. I'm listening to it. Are you still reading it? I'm listening to it on tape. Yeah. I'm reading it with my ears. Yeah. I haven't what finished do you think it of it so far? Um, I like it a lot. Um, I, I, I like it a lot. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> Talk more about it. <laughs> End of yeah. sentence. Um, he's he, he's a like real magical realism guy, mm -hmm. which I've really been enjoying because the something about magical realism is just like so. I don't know. It's just so cool to me how when when it's done well, how you can just be reading something and someone will be in the most ridiculous like, insane situation, but you, and, and, like, that makes literally no sense, and you just completely accept it as true. It's almost like, mm. it's like, like, it's, it's like the phenomenon when you're dreaming, and, like, something just, ha something bizarre happens, mm. and you're like, that's normal, just because, yeah. you know, that's the dream world. He, like, manages to do that with his writing. He puts you, mm. he, like, that's the big thing of Kafka on the Shore. There's a lot of motifs about dreaming, but even in, I read another book by him called A Wild Sheep Chase, and I'm now reading the sequel to that book, and he does it in all of his, all of the books that I've read so far by him, where he, like, he, puts you in a place where anything can happen and it's entirely normal and it and because it's such unusual stuff it I like it's never really upfront or at, about what any of it means you kind of have to really think about it and sometimes it just doesn't mean anything um 
so Kafka and the Shores, the plot's a little hard to describe, but I could I can describe a wild sheep sheep chase very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, there's this advertise this guy who um, starts an advertising firm in Tokyo uh, with his partner, and he gets a he gets a photo sent to him in a letter from an old friend, an old like childhood friend, and it's a picture of like an old house in the mountains of northern Japan with a giant pasture of sheep. And in, like, the bottom right corner, very small, there's a sheep with a black star on its back. It looks different from all the others. Mm-hmm. And he decides to use it in some in some kind of small advertisement thing for a small company. And he gets a call saying, you need to take that advertisement down and you need to, like, and you need to meet with this big right-wing leader. Mm-hmm. This, like, behind-the-scenes kind of, like, political powerhouse guy. And basically what happens is the the secretary or his like the the big powerful guy's secretary his like personal assistant drives him up to this giant estate and gives him a bunch of money says you need to go find this sheep within a month or we're, basically we're going to kill you he doesn't i don't think he ever directly says that but he says like we need you need we're going to just don't don't fail this mission. Like mm. you need to go find this sheep within a month, and the reason you need to do that is because we need it to save our boss's life because he's dying. Mm. And then the rest of it's, you know, the book. I don't want to give anything else away, but that's like, that's like the beginning of the book. Is he just throws you right away into this? For some reason, he has to find this one single sheep in northern Japan, which is which has a whole thousands of sheep and flocks everywhere, and bring it back, or else he's gonna die. That reminds that sounds me. sounds so cool. Yeah. Yeah. That reminds me a lot of what it's like to read or listen to Kafka on the shore. Like, like there's this, not to give any, much away on that one either, but like one of the first characters you meet, he just, he can talk to cats. Mm-hmm. And they, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. And, then, and it's just yeah. like, no easy way to put this. Uh, he can talk to cats. And it's just like yeah. basically treated like a way that, one of the ways that he makes a living is is finding lost cats by talking to other cats about the lost cats and showing them pictures of the cats and stuff. And, mm-hmm. like, it's never, like, it, you like you kind of learn some stuff about maybe why it happened and maybe you learn more, because I haven't finished the book yet, but, like, but it's, like, the way that he treats it with, like, he treats it with such a level of, like, mon- like mundanity, if that's how you say that mm-hmm. word, that you, it's like... Mundanity. Mundaneity sounds way <laughs> less real. Mundaneity? 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 Don't ask me. That you, like, you kind of forget to, like, to to, war- to wonder about it. Like, it's like, it just, mm-hmm. you're just like, you just accept it. Because it's, yeah. like, just part of this world he's making. It's, yeah, it's very good. Ben, I feel like you described that so well. I, I didn't, like, really quite understand what you meant until you are like, it's like in a dream. Mm-hmm. When something happens and you're like... Of course that's happening. Yeah, you know? exactly. And then later you wake up, and almost like when you wake up from a dream like that, you still have a grasp of that, like, that was normal. Mm-hmm. And then, yep. you know. Yeah, like for the first few moments, you're like thinking about the dream that happened. You're like, yeah, that was all, that all shapes up, even though it still <laughs> makes no sense. <laughs> that's great. I'm going to add that. Can you repeat the author name again for me and our listeners? It's Haruki Murakami. Cool. I'm going to add that to my yeah. library list. I would recommend... Kafka on the Shore because it's super good. Yeah, and first, also, before, um, hmm, a while, well, a Wild Sheep Chase was one of his first books. If you want to read them at all, like chronologically, it was one of mm. I think his first like big hits. Um, mm. But I think Kafka is better. Okay. Right now, I'm reading the sequel to a Wild Sheep Ch- a Wild Sheep Chase, which is called Dance, 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 and it's like it's kind of already. I'm like a quarter of the way through it. It's like already better than a Wild Sheep Chase. I would mm. say. And what's interesting about it is like a lot of weird shit happens in a wild sheep chase and the protagonist it's a it's a first they're both first person um and the protagonist in Dance 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 never really explains that or even kind of addresses the weirdness I don't know it's just and I guess that's partly because you're expected to have read the the first book before you read the sequel but it's also just kind of natural in that kind of world where he'd be like these things happen to me move on you know <laughs> Can I make a blanket can i make a blanket statement about dreams yeah please do okay i've been waiting (laughs) i um love love hearing about people's dreams (laughs) i wish i could remember mine more often i'm not being sarcastic 
if anyone we should start a dream podcast yeah if anyone here on this call with me right now or anybody who, whose ears this is reaching ever wants to tell me about a dream please do i love it i, don't, I didn't know that so tell me about that do you like do you like the just the wonder or do you like to like um do you like to like try to figure out what that means about a person? All of the above. I I love I love it because lamp. Huh? I said you were like I love it. I said lamp. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Great timely <laughs> reference. <laughs> that was a a new release movie that I was referencing. <laughs> um I Love, I love um, just hearing, like, what a person's brain is capable of, like, coming up with when, uh, when, when it's, I, I just, like, I don't necessarily think that they have much to do with, um, I don't know, like, deep, dark secrets in people's lives or whatever, but, like, or their personalities or whatnot, like, I think it probably has a lot more to do with, like, what happened with your day, but I love looking for those patterns, even if they don't really mm. exist. It scratches the same itch that, like, sort of fantasy novels do for me or like looking for patterns and finding patterns where they may or may not exist and like some like Mm. great greater order that could exist in the world Hmm. but probably doesn't (laughs) (laughs) i like to as you know i'm like not a super huge fan of hearing about people's dreams i like am and and i am not because i am if they're really interesting and and most importantly concise (laughs) but like once my wife was telling me about a dream and was just going on and on it was like not interesting i'm sorry (laughs) and she's our only listener (laughs) i know (laughs) it wasn't she's really interesting she's so interesting her dream was that interesting nothing interesting was happening and i was like i'm not it's not that I'm not interested in you or interested in, in what happened to you. I'm not interested in what didn't happen to you. It's, <laughs> if it's like a concise, interesting, like, I dreamt that the moon was crashing into the earth, but we were panda bears, so it was fine. Like, I'm like, that's really interesting. No, is that is that all you want to hear? Or do, you, do you want, like, an elevator pitch for the dream? And then if that's interesting enough, you'll hear the whole thing. Yeah, but, you know, I, I feel like it's impossible for somebody to to tell you their dream in an interesting way because there's so much backstory in dreams that just yeah. you're just transported with this backstory That's true. and not only is it so much backstory it's backstory that is nonsensical like we've discussed like it's just like And sometimes backstory that didn't even happen in the dream itself it's just like things exactly. you know that are true in the dream for some reason. Yeah. Right. yeah. Right. And it's a memory right. of something that doesn't make sense so you're like so thing. in the dream but it's important you're like well in the dream I was capable of talking to spiders, but they weren't like spiders. You know? yeah, they were yeah. like, they were like, they were like. So you have to go on these like crazy tangents. Yeah. That you had to be there is the thing. Yeah. About yeah. Dreams. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, they definitely so. have to be kind of doctored into a like more of a story form to actually be interesting. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They have to be curated. It can't be like. Yeah. I w- wake up and I tell you my dream because yeah. it's it's too it's too fresh. You gotta you gotta like throw it in the rock tumbler and then tell yep. me. <laughs> can I <laughs> rock tumbler? Friend. Can I can I read you um, a sh- a, sh- a very short series of tweets that I saw today that that were someone tweeting pretty concisely about a dream that they had last night. Yeah, sure. yeah. This is um uh Patrick Gill who is a contributor for Polygon. Oh, I love this guy. Um, yeah, he's very funny. His his Twitter is pizza underscore suplex. He also whatever. He's great. Um, had a dream I saw Hall and Oates perform at a horrible business seminar, and Oates had food poisoning and dramatically shit himself on stage. <laughs> there's more. There's more. There's more. He sprayed his jeans down with a hose and tried to keep playing, but the rest of the band was not having it. <laughs> The dream ended with the audience milling about while the band made Oats get in an ambulance. (laughs) Do you guys remember that seeing that thing about David Grohl breaking his leg and like finishing a concert? No. Did you see that? There's like this video, look at or photo, look it up. The David Grohl playing a concert while his leg is getting cast. He like broke his leg on stage, got it cast while he finished the concert. I feel like. Somebody shitting themselves and then trying to continue the concert is like more badass. 
Fergie like That's peed her pants courage. on stage one time, I think. <laughs> but that was I mean, in real she life. Could, she could just play it off as like intentional. You know? <laughs> I'm look. I'm googling Fergie pee pants. <laughs> you shouldn't use DuckDuckGo or something for that. <laughs> Kylie's gonna look at your internet search history later and be like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> um. The but, girls don't pee their pants on stage. <laughs> uh, but my my actual obsession this week, if I'm being honest, has been this Please podcast. Be yeah. Oh yes. Um, and podcasts in general, and kind of the reaction we've gotten um, to this podcast. So just like very very briefly, like we broke um, 50 downloads like lifetime over the like two and a half weeks the podcast has existed on Tuesday. Woo. Which was exciting for for oh. for me um, for us I think. Um, even I'm though excited. I don't know about you guys, I'm excited for sure about it. I was like, it, <laughs> I was like really, I don't know. It's just it's cool because that means like for sure there are people who listen to this that don't know at least yeah. one of us. You know, I have a question though. If I don't download the podcast but i just like stream it like a couple times or five does that count as an individual <laughs> download i don't think Do you know so. the answer to that okay cool it really doesn't i don't think it does <laughs> um but uh then also what's been happening which has been really cool and kind of exciting and, and interesting is that a lot of people upon listening to this podcast um, that I know have been like reacting by like, yeah, like they like it and everything, but also they're like excited by the idea that like, this is something that was not like dis you know, besides like me stalling on posting the first episode for several months, like this was not something that was like that hard or expensive for, for us to pull off. And mm -hmm. we're able to do it like across three different, well, not three different States, but three different geolog geological locations. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, Geographical. That's a good point. Geographical. They might, the our listeners might not know where we all are. They might think we're sitting in a room together. We're not. Hell no. Nah. I'm laying yeah. on my bed in... I'm sitting on my bed. <laughs> I'm sitting at my desk. Ben, get on your bed. <laughs> <laughs> where are you located, Hannah? Um, I'm in, I'm in Wareham near Cape Cod. And Ben is... Where? In Boston. In Boston. Aaron Wade. I'm in Durham, North Carolina. Woo! So, like, so, like, that, all we really had to do was all download the same, like, recording, um, program and, you know, make sure we had a way to get ourselves heard. And I, I invested in a slightly better microphone for, like, the second episode and going forward. So that was, like, one thing, but it wasn't that expensive. And then it's, like you know, a, a small month, a really small monthly investment to like host the podcast. So it can actually end up on like, you know, feeds and stuff and on iTunes. And we are on Google play music now, um, which I was really Ooh. excited about. Um, and, uh, but a lot of people who listen to it, who are friends of mine have been saying like, Oh, I have an idea for a podcast. And like, I, I, I know at least, um, two or three people, um, who have talked to me in the last week have like told me ideas uh, for podcasts that I think are cool ideas. And like, I just kind of want all of them to know that um, I'm really interested in the idea of like helping people like um, to figure out kind of the logistics that I just had to figure out of like getting at whatever they would record and uh, like getting the right software to, to record and edit and getting that stuff like up onto the internet and all of that. Um, and there's like cost savings to be had for everybody by like by hosting your website, hosting your um, podcast together on the same like account on like uh, Libsyn and stuff. So, um, you know, like I, I kind of want to start with like I, um, I kind of feel like the owner of 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 way too broad um, in the way that in the sense that like I do the intro and I do the editing and I do the uploading and I wouldn't want to take on, like, another podcast with that amount of, like, responsibility on me. But, like, I'm I'm really excited by the idea of, like, helping other people to put up content that they're excited about. And, you know, if if our podcast can get 50 downloads and it's about literally nothing, 
then imagine (laughs) (laughs) what what something with a subject matter could do. (laughs) Anything. Anything. It's been really amazing to me, like, how accessible you've made this seem. I mean, you've been handling a lot of the details, but even, like, our first meeting, we just, like, are in a Google Hangout and are recording and, you know, send the audio to you afterwards and then... It was like it was like almost nothing, you know. Yeah. Um, you've done a lot of the heavy lifting, but it's been really accessible to me. So I've, you know, you've suggested a podcast idea for me. Yeah. I've been thinking about it, and you know, asked a friend who might be interested. I co-hosting. want you to do that so bad. You don't. Yeah. Have to, you can mention it. You don't have to. Well, kind of like in the my last week's obsession about my you know movie reviews, something like that. I was actually thinking like. And this will kind of tie into my obsession, but like, a, you know, like lesbian, like art or something like mm-hmm. that, you know, like uh, creativity or something like that. But yeah, um, that sounds awesome. Um, any cool tidbits that you've learned about kind of podcast creation along the way? I almost said podcast creation. See, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's an interesting one. Some yeah, see, I'm word. telling you, like I couldn't think of that ahead of time but <laughs> Pod- podcast podcast creation. Creation. <laughs> there there are things that i i feel like i've i've tried to do because they're things i've always liked as like an avid podcast listener um like well i can't think of any right now but like i try to think of it like um i try to think of it as what like what did what have i liked about podcasts in the past and and like approach it from that perspective um I've, I've, I've discovered that there are a lot of kind of like, because podcasting is not, it's not like a super competitive thing. It's not like, since it's free, you know, to download and since so many people have office jobs like me, like I I am always like desperate to find another podcast that I like personally. Mm -hmm. And like, I feel like, I think a lot of people are that way. So it seems like, um, podcasts about similar subject matters and stuff and, and kind of just like the podcaster community in general it is really kind of welcoming and friendly because they can afford to be in a lot mm-hmm. of ways, you know, and like, right. Um, and, um, it's really cool. Like all these networks that are out there and all these, like all these, like kind of supportive little loose groupings and, and things like that. I really, it's too bad that the word is like stuck on podcast forever. Cause it, it never <laughs> sounds cool to be like, I heard this on a podcast or like, you know, I have a podcast now. I or that's like, a cool word. I don't, I don't at all. But. That's so funny that you were thinking about that, Hannah, because I was just thinking about it. I was like, podcast, it's like from an iPod. There's like going to be a time super soon where a, a pod, we're really like, where, where's the origin? Oh, once upon a time, they used to have these You're things right. called iPods. You're right. You know what I was like, thinking about today? You know the, the AirPods, the, the wireless headphones yeah. for new iPhones? Oh, oh God. They might have called those AirBuds if the move, the AirBud movies didn't exist. You're right. Isn't that hilarious? Imagine just, that universe. Like, the, <laughs> right? whole, the whole world is just everything in juxtaposition of something else. That's right? going to be it's Mandela like... effect in like 20 years. <laughs> Weren't those called Air Buds? <laughs> <laughs> no, that was the movie about the yeah, cat that... who played softball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I was trying to explain the Mandela effect to some people at lunch today. And then none of them had ever heard of it. I was trying to I was trying to share your joke, Aaron, about how that could be a good excuse for forgetting to send an email. <laughs> and they they just all stared at me like I had three. Oh my god. And then you tried to Google the Mandela effect and there was no Wikipedia page for it, and you're like, I swear it was here. <laughs> <laughs> that's so that's pretty much it. Just like if you if you if you're if, if you have a podcast idea and you know how to reach me. You know, just fucking do it. Just fucking do it. Just fucking do it. Re- you could how people could reach you by following Way Too Broad Pod on Twitter yeah. and sending you a DM. Yes, they certainly could. Um, oh, I guess there's also another thing I learned. Um, just like on the sort of tips front, and also I'm happy to like if there are specific questions that come up when you're working on like whatever Aaron or any, anybody else who gets in touch. Like, uh, um. There are, there are a lot of good resources out there for designing things like logos or and also for free music. Um, mm. uh, although that's not where we got our music. Aaron made our, our, our music that's in our 
our episodes, but, um, but there's, but there's a lot of good resources out there. Um, educational resources about, about making and, and posting podcasts and also just like generally, um, free stuff on the internet. That's pretty well designed that helps you look like you might have a lot more experience than you do. At. Our situation looks so legit. <laughs> yeah, Thanks I to think you. I like that logo a lot. Yeah, it's great. Thank you. But I would replace it in a heartbeat for like one that was made by any actual artist. But we should. I speak. think it's great. Well, thank you. What's your obsession, Aaron? Well, so I was I was noodling about this, and some some came to mind. I was like, oh, I've kind of been thinking about this this week. And then I realized I have been, like, truly obsessed about something this week. And I only hesitated for a moment because it's, like, it's, like, related to to my obsession from episode one, which was many, many months ago, yes, I, I must say. It was. Like, that was, that was, yeah. uh... It's a lab. You're a Yeah. Lab. Yeah. Well, so my obsession this week, and bear with me, <laughs> is, is Tignataro. Okay. I'm obsessed with Tignataro this week. Uh... A couple things happened. The first is that I I faced my fears slash demons and rejoined the library, um, <laughs> which was a momentous occasion because I owed them an enormous sum of money. Wow! And, what? In really? library currency, you know, <laughs> it, it's not like every day an enormous sum of money, but in like a library. Oh, I see. Like on a scale of a library, it was a lot. <laughs> it was a on, lot. On a scale of one to library, it was a lot. Of money. <laughs> It was full on library. <laughs> if, do you want to guess how much I would like? So let, let me frame this. Five years ago, I haven't been to the library in years. You know that shame. Everybody knows that shame. That yeah. guilt yeah. of like unreturned books. Mm-hmm. Um, I hadn't been in five years and hadn't been to return the books I had in five years. So if you want, to, do you want to guess how much I owed the Durham County Library? One hundred twenty dollars. Hannah, do you have a guess? I was going to guess way lower than that, so... Well, guess. I want you to guess. $50. It was $90. Oh! Ooh, like right in the middle. Wow. Right in the middle. <laughs> so I had the library $90. $93. But wow. what better place could you put your money? Never heard well, of anyone owing the library that much. By <laughs> Price is Right rules, Ben, I did win. That's true. Yeah. That's and true. everything is by Price is Right rules. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna make you some sort of... Prize. Thank you. I promise. I'll send it I to do you. insist upon it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, this is like totally a tangent story, but I well, I had this like crossroads because I was like, I could, I have a new address now, <laughs> and all they require is your driver's license. So I was like, I have a chance to start over, to start anew as a new person, <laughs> leave my past behind. I'm a new Aaron Brown <laughs> with a new address. I don't, who's that other person who owes ninety dollars? I've never heard of anybody owing that much money to a library. But I knew, I knew that would require. I knew that would require lying directly to to the library, so I didn't. And then the librarian was like, "You can't check out any books. You owe us a lot of money, or something like that." It was terrible. It was, Everything that you have nightmares about. But anyway, I paid my fine. I, like, was, you know, rose from the ashes and uh, checked out the Tignataro memoir ah. and read it. And it was really good. Is that um, Boyish Girl Interrupted? Is that, is that her? Is that no, no, that's her um, most recent stand-up. This oh, okay. is... <laughs> my dog is trying to participate in the podcast. It's, uh, it's called I'm just a person. Oh, okay. And so that was pretty good. And, but, you know, what I really wanted was some, like, juicy details. Like, I had re- recently rewatched the TIG documentary mm-hmm. on Netflix. Have you all seen yes, it? Yes, very good. Uh, oh, Ben, it's really good. Yeah. I recently rewatched it, and it's so beautiful because it's, like, this interesting documentary, but, like, through the course of the filming, her and her wife, like, fall in love, mm-hmm. and it's, like, basically, like, a love story unfolds before your eyes, but it's not fictitious at all. Um... And Tigficious at all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I had, so I was hoping the memoir, memoir would like the memoir. Have, <laughs> <laughs> the memoir <laughs> would have some really juicy details about like her coming out story or like previous relationships or something. Mm-hmm. And it didn't really. It talked a lot about like um, it had a lot of this. The it was great, and you know, but it it did 
kind of repeat a lot of the things from her like live album and mm-hmm. from um her documentary mm-hmm. but then um one mississippi season two came out oh, and I didn't know that. yeah it just came That's out exciting. And so my wife hadn't seen season one, and I was like, great, I wanted to rewatch it. So we pretty much, like, completely binged season one and season two, and season two is incredible. It's just, it's so good, and it's so funny, and it's much brighter than season one. Mm-hmm. Season one was, like, pretty dark. Um, and the, you know, her real-life wife plays her love interest, mm-hmm. and the way they kind of have that unfold is really great and beautiful and, like, slow and they talk, tackle a lot of, like, really great topics, um, like, you know, racism and the Trump presidency and, like, how women can be molested or anyone can be molested even if they're not being, like, physically touched. Like, just mm-hmm. really, like, a lot of, like, in this short series, like, each episode is, like, 30 minutes long, I think, and it's only six episodes. There's, like, so much to it. Um, and, like, we literally, like, re wound rewinded rewound rewound yeah we're gonna wow, go I rewound just don't know <laughs> rewounder we re- rewounder something right now <laughs> we, ba- we backed backed up and <laughs> like rewatched a section because we were like we were like dying it was so good mm-hmm. and i think like for me it was um what i've been thinking about in regards to this and about, like, why I'm, like, loving Tignataro so much right now is through this journey where I've been watching these, like, lesbian movies, some of which are really horrible, mm-hmm. this, you know, a lot of these movies that I've been watching are, are older, you know, and the thing about them is that it's, like, you know, in the 90s or whatever, in the 2000s even, your kind of, like, queer art mm-hmm wasn't Mm -hmm. like that was like your option like there weren't a ton of options and so one old review i saw of this terrible movie i watched in which this like really predatory woman is in a relationship with a much younger woman the review i read of it from you know in the 90s was like well at least the girl is of age unlike this other movie right like it's like this is all we had so we standard (laughs) right we like make compromises yeah you know, about this art that we have because it's all we have, Mm -hmm. right? And and we're, I feel like I'm, we're just starting to see without being, you know, I'm sure there's tons of exceptions that I haven't encountered yet, you know, just starting to educate myself about it. But we're starting to see like these really good pieces of queer art that like you don't, that are really like set great examples, don't Mm -hmm. have annoying tropes, like are really like solidly good on their own and they tell queer stories that are not you know these repeats of the same ones we've been hearing yeah or you know made for the male gaze or like whatever 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 Mm -hmm. and they address Um, the fact that people like lgbt people are just people like they don't have to they don't have to be defined by their by their sexuality all the time exactly yeah and it's like the the representation that that we're starting to see in art is more true to, like, the types of people that we are, just, like, yeah. normal, living our life. So mm-hmm. um, I was just, like, loving, loving her so hard for that. Like, it was just so good. Watch it. The end. Yeah, I love Tijon Taro. Did you know, uh, Hannah, you know who her wife is, right? Yeah, Do you? Stephanie Allen. Yeah, did you know? I, I didn't realize that Stephanie Allen was in that improv group with uh, Lauren Lapkus and Mary Holland also. Wild horses. Yeah, I wild knew horses. It. I didn't. I didn't. I had no idea. Like, I knew of wild horses and heard them on a bunch of podcasts and wished I live in LA so I They're could see so them. They're so funny. Uh, because and like then I found out Stephanie Allen was Tignatara's wife and I was like, oh shit, that's that's just like good people doing good shit. <laughs> yeah, you know? good people doing good <laughs> shit. Yeah. Do you? Um, I I do you like follow her on Facebook, Aaron. Um, Tig. Mm-hmm. I love her Facebook posts. They're so. <laughs> Like, um, a lot of times she's just like tells you about her day, but she'll also include a picture of like her holding their babies. Ugh. But but like it doesn't have anything to do with the post. It's just like, look at me and my babies. <laughs> They're so good. I, lo- I love that. I loved like listening to her live album. Like after I knew like how her life. Yeah. It's like it's like rereading a book, 
where, like, bad things happen to your favorite character, but, like, it's a happy ending, and you're like, just hang in there, everything's yeah. gonna be okay. It's uh, just yeah. like, just like that, you're just like, you're gonna be okay. Like, you're gonna be better than okay. You're gonna marry a beautiful woman and have twins. Like, yeah. it's, like, gonna be awesome. Yeah. Everything's gonna be great. Yeah, everything's gonna be perfect. You know, um, I think Take My Wife still doesn't have a home. No, it doesn't. Oh, man, that's upsetting. I haven't watched that yet either. Well, CISO's still alive. I should get on that. Yeah, you should. It's very, very good. Just Take got my wife for that subscription like two days ago. For our 50 listeners, is uh, the television show that Cameron Esposito, Esposito and Rhea Butcher do together. Yeah. Which, which is another um, pair of lesbians whose marriage uh. I love to watch. I... I I feel like on her own sometimes Cameron Esposito is like a little bit much for me just like her like she's like a lot of personality which is why I really like that they're doing more stuff together because mm-hmm. like they I think they even each other out in in a really sweet and awesome way and like when yeah. they both when they guest together on a podcast I enjoy it like several by several yeah. magnitudes more <laughs> and and like they cannot appear together I like I haven't heard or seen an, a, a, a segment where they're together where like one of them well especially like Cameron Esposito will just like wax poetic about how much she loves and respects her wife yeah. it is so sweet have yeah. you heard their new podcast Query? No hang on uh, Cam- it's Cameron either. Esposito but the first episode is her She's so it's Cameron Esposito interviewing queer people like you know and uh, people in the queer community and the first episode is her interviewing Rhea Butcher and it's really sweet Aww. That's awesome. Yeah. So cute. It made me think, too, and actually we had a couple come over, and we hadn't met. It was a good friend of ours and their partner, and we hadn't met their partner yet. Mm-hmm. And I had just listened to that episode, and so the format of the dinner was we had um, each person and, you know, the couple would interview each other as a way for the other people to get to know them. Uh-huh. Because it's, like, a really efficient way to, like, mm. get to the good parts of somebody, yeah. is that, like... Who can ask you better leading questions than your, like, signif- significant other, you know? Hang on. I, you had a... What do you mean you had it Like, you had them Wait. over to your house? Not Cameron Esposito. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had our... So, a good friend of ours, um, the person who actually um, uh, officiated our wedding... Oh, she her, was awesome. Yeah, so her partner came over, and we hadn't met her partner, and her partner was kind of more um, of an in- like, you know, introverted person, like, not somebody to like necessarily volunteer yeah and so to get to know her we had our friend interview her and vice versa like to get you know to catch up came up with that idea well i had thought of it because of Of listening to wow the podcast where cameron esposito interviews Rhea butcher it's like you know all the interesting things to ask yeah you're you know you're there's no not going to be any dead ends this is what i'm saying the power of podcasts transcends their dumb name (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> rebirth what would you what would you call them Hannah if you had your if yeah, you that's had your what I, that's, that was, I was gonna ask that too like what would be better I don't know um that's hard to come up with on the spot but if it's something listen you really care stories about, <laughs> ooh. what'd you say listen <laughs> stories ear snacks ear friends <laughs> thinky time <laughs> The, the one-sided conversations. And if they're over an hour, they become ear meals. Wow. <laughs> that way, Ours we is like have... three three minutes from being in the ear meal. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's your latest we're, ear snack. We're at uh, ear heavy hors d'oeuvre at this point. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, oh, I have um one more new segment to... um. To close us out, if we're ready for that, yeah, it's exciting. Getting a little bit later. Okay, hang on. A second. Do, are we going to keep the homework segment? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. I will f- finish with this. <laughs> it could flop. I'm not sure. Okay. So, uh, Ben, what's please your take longer to start it. Well, no, <laughs> it's you, Ben. What do you mean? It's me. You have to give your homework. Your homework. What's your oh, homework, Oh, then? oh, 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 uh, Go read Haruki Murakami's books. Sorry, I thought we were going to do that at the very end. My, my bad. This is... Now the new segment is at the end. Sorry. <laughs> God. The new segment is Hannah looking for the new segment <laughs> until 
we have to eventually stop. Because <laughs> we all fall asleep. Um, <laughs> Go read Haruki Murakami, start with A Wild Sheep Chase or Kafka on the Shore. They're both really good. Yeah. And I'm also sorry. follow my Twitter, any Disco Greg. Yeah. Um, I guess, like, listen to podcasts or ear snacks, as we're now calling them. Um <laughs> <laughs> I hope we stay committed to that, by the way. If you <laughs> know me, calling them ear snacks. if you know me and you would like to, if you're th- listening to this and thinking, I could make a better ear snack than this, then <laughs> you, contact me and let's start taking steps in that direction. And or if you don't know her, you just DM her on the show's Twitter. Yeah, but, but if you don't know me, then your concept actually has to be oh, good. No. So. I just thought of something. We have to rename... The Twitter handle it has to be way too broad. Snacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! So disregard if you all right, follow all of our branding is fucked. <laughs> um, and the the yeah, so the Twitter currently until I update it. Are you gonna change? I don't know. I have, I don't know what's involved in doing that. Um, I think you just change it. Know. You just edit your profile. Right now it's at too broad pod t o o broad pod. And um, my Twitter is anthropology, anthropology with an H at the front of it, but anthropology like the study of people, not like the store. And that probably takes longer than spelling it, but uh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> and um, we're That's also not as entertaining. <laughs> yeah, and um, our podcast is also um, it's on iTunes and it's on Google Play, um, uh, Google Play Music. And so please go um, rate and review and subscribe if you enjoyed yourself hanging out with us today. I have a practical question. Okay. Is it necessary to tell people who are actively listening to your podcast where they can find your podcast? Uh. Yeah, Hannah, you're a dumb idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to come out and say it. I mean. It's fine. I, I, don't I read know. through the lines. It's nice to, I guess. You know, Remind I guess where you should show the options. I guess where you should. Well, the important it. part of that was review it, rate and review it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and where you probably should review it is iTunes because I don't know how to even review podcasts on Google Play. So, hmm. you know, just don't um, do it, please. My homework this week is to watch episode uh, seasons one and two of One Mississippi. And face your library fears. Let let that shame and guilt <laughs> wash away in in the rain and go like just, just the beauty of the public library. It's it's amazing. There's no place like it. And then you can and then you can go get Ben's book. Yeah. yeah. And you can find me on Twitter at at Ern Burn E R N B R N and um, on Instagram. At Lesbian Movie Reviews. Woo. Um, okay, so uh, our final sign-off will be a fact about narwhals. Love it. <laughs> nice. Okay, narwhals, <laughs> narwhals change color as they age. Newborns are blue-gray, juveniles are blue-black, and adults are a mottled gray. Old narwhals are nearly all white. Okay. Wow. I'm gonna four different go colors. Come make up on. an internet fact about narwhals that you'll read next week. <laughs> <laughs> They're just not real, y'all. <laughs> okay. I'm, are you enthralled by my conspiracy theory? Yeah, I really am.